serious. What is the fastest way you have seen someone ruin their life? Story 1. Saw a pilot without instrument rating take off into IMC conditions. Instrument meteorological conditions is a flight category that describes weather conditions that require pilots to fly primarily by instruments rather than use visual cues to maintain controlled flight. He had his whole family on board. Weather was closing in. He agreed that it was impossible to get home, but wanted to make it to a larger municipal airport so they wouldn't have to stay in a motel. The fuel attendant and a bunch of old veteran pilots hanging around the airport office all said they'd drive him to a nicer place, but he thought he'd have a better chance of getting out the next day from the other airport. Conditions weren't that bad when he took off, but we all agreed later that no one without instrument rating would should have flown that day. So the last time anyone saw that whole family, pilot, wife, two adult sons, alive, was all of us watching him take off and fly just under the cloud base to do a scud run in the direction of the nearest Muni. They crashed in full overcast 10 miles out, no survivors. All told, it probably took 15 minutes for this guy to make the worst and last decision of his life. This was over 30 years ago, but it's haunted me ever since. What could should I have done differently that might have convinced him to not fly? I was a newbie pilot at the time, but even I knew it was a bad idea. There were at least three other pilots there that day. Did he feel ganged up on? Could we have appointed the most grizzled, straight-shooting, gravel-voiced veteran to take the guy aside and give him a... I'm not your dad, but talk? Should we have tackled him and taken away his keys? Called the cops? What would we even have told them? I've long since come to terms with it, but there are still the occasional moments where I feel like I failed. Story 2. One of my best friends was close to finishing his BA, got career plans, money was physically fit. Everything was fine. But then on New Year's Eve night, he went into a famous nightclub in Berlin, bought some medicates, and then jumped from the seventh floor. Either he bought something he wasn't familiar with, or the medicates were laced with something stronger. Anyway. Security cameras have him aimlessly wandering the floors of his 20-story apartment building, and I guess he got paranoid and wanted out, so he jumped. Apparently, he didn't pass away instantly, but slowly bleed out over the next 30 minutes. But since this happened shortly after midnight, nobody noticed because of all the noise and fireworks. They found his body around 4 a.m. and ruled it suicide. Don't do medicates, it's not worth it. Story 3. My cousin, 18F, finished her senior year early, so she was basically just waiting for May to do the graduation and get her diploma. She worked at a lake restaurant and had started hanging out with a bad crowd. At this time, she had been puffing a lot of herb and drinking, as well as just being generally reckless all the time. She was my best friend, so she texted me to tell me about everything she did, basically. One night, she texted me to tell me that she had tried meth and it was the best high of her life, but she will never do it again. Exactly one month after that text, she overdosed and passed away. They put her portrait in her graduation seat, and her dad got to walk and pick up her diploma. Story 4 a friend of mine drove his bike without helmet, had the helmet didn't bother to wear it. It was late at night. We were having a party at my home and he was coming to join us. It had rained earlier so the roads were wet. His motorbike unfortunately slipped and he fell hitting his head on the curb. Some passerby called the ambulance. We got to know about it early in the morning from his parents. His head trauma caused him to go into a coma. He never came back from it. He was in a coma for a few months and then sadly passed away. He was a chill dude, if only he wore the helmet while driving. Rest easy, D. Edit. He was an avid biker, drove his bike across the country all the way to the Himalayas. He used to wear a helmet all the time except for that fateful night. I was having a party at my home, you know, BBQ slash beer slash whiskey and all that. He was going to join us after work. He had the helmet on him even that day. I will never know why he decided to not wear it that day. Story 5. An acquaintance. He had a good job, nice truck, mortgage on a nice home, minimal debt, and a relationship with someone out of his league. Before I knew him, he'd had a DUI, but his attorney got him a plea deal that dropped the DUI down to a minor charge. A real lucky break. All he had to do was stay the course. He could have walked home that night. It was less than two miles, but he was too proud to leave his truck at the bar. So instead, he wrapped it around a power pole. No one was hurt, including him. The judge who got his case was furious to learn his previous DUI had been pled down. The judge rejected a plea deal and vowed to throw the book at him. There was prison, then a year on house arrest. His job required a driver license, so that was gone. I don't know at what point in his house arrest he could have started working, but he refused to. His former employer offered him a non-driving job, less money, but still good money. He turned it down because it was beneath him. He said the same thing to two jobs his girlfriend single-handedly secured for him. Even after his house arrest, he refused to work. He said he didn't want to. Apparently, yelling at his girlfriend to pay his mortgage was better than working. She finally got the courage to leave. His parents found him dead. No one will ever know if he intended to drink himself to death or whether it just happened. His parents blamed the girlfriend. 
Apparently, the world would still be graced by his presence if she had stayed to get hit and yelled at. Please don't drive drunk. Not ever. Not even a little. If you're not sure, just don't. And if you suspect you have the disease of addiction, please get help. I don't really care that this person passed away, but he hit a lot of innocent branches on the way down. A lot of suffering for no reason. Story 6. I posted this once before. I had a friend that had a promising career got upset and went into full road rage for a woman who forgot to turn her blinker on, and he slightly bumped her back bumper on the freeway, causing her to lose control and flipping over and defeating the driver and her two daughters. Oddly, dot dot, it was all caught on his car dash cam and a trucker with his own dash cam that was behind him. He is now doing 40 plus years in prison. Post update, I wasn't expecting much attention on this story. Additional details that people keep asking me. I can't say we were close friend or good friends. We hung out during high school years. I may have seen him a couple times afterwards. He moved out of state. Most information I got was from his sister. I do know that he is in jail for what he did. Now, I'm not sure if his sister is not giving me the full story, but I do know he definitely received high jail sentence. I know he went to college for marketing. I believe he was interning for high-end sports marketing company. Story 7. Watched a buddy spend his entire life savings betting on the Paulo Costa Vias Adesanya. I begged him not to do it, and he lost his and his wife's entire 60K nest egg. She left him immediately with the kids, and now he lives at his mom's house. Edit. Wow, this blew up. So a little more backstory. He had been betting on prize fighting for a short while and winning. Nothing outrageous and heck, I even bet with him on a time or two because it was smaller bets. One, two hundred. He had been winning, probably made a few grand, not sure how much, but he was always saying he won and showing off his bets. So I can confirm he had been winning and his luck was pretty impressive. As far as I know, he doesn't gamble anymore and is just trying to rebuild his life. He lost his wife but does spend a lot of time with the kids. Story 8. A senior girl from my college pushed another girl she was friends with off a 30-foot bridge into water as a joke, broke her neck and collarbone, and she's permanently in a wheelchair edit. Holy stuff, this blew up while I was asleep. I'll answer some questions. I got feet and meters mixed up only around 30-foot drop. Two days in hospital for her friend. Two days in jail for the girl who pushed her. She spent the same time in jail as the victim spent in hospital. It's messed up three. The parents of the victim chose not to press charges. It was not Taylor Smith. Story 9. I wound up having to change the number for my first real cell phone because the previous owner of that number still kept giving it out. Apparently, she had just moved and her old job couldn't get a hold of her to send her her last check. Her new job couldn't get a hold of her to get her schedule. Her vet couldn't get her to pick up her cat. I got calls from her leasing company who needed documentation to secure her apartment. Every single day was some new way an idiot was upsetting up her finances, her housing, her job, her pets, her social life, all because she couldn't remember her new phone number. After a month, I finally got fed up and had the number changed. Melissa, if you were supposed to be a massage therapist for the PGA Tour in 2013, I hope you eventually got your stuff together. Story 10. 15, 20 years ago, an ex worked at a dream job type of place. If you make it professionally in that field, this employer was is the absolute peak. There is no better place to go. New guy started there on X's team right out of university. His first day, he went to the company store and got all the gear with company's name on it. Shirt, hat, socks, etc., and proudly put it all on. After work, team took the new guy out to drinks to celebrate his first day at Dream Job Employer. New guy gets way too drunk, goes outside to puff a cig, and then takes his pee-pee out and presses it up against the bar's glass window. Pee-pee man's new colleagues, all the bar's patrons, and all their staff see his dork. X closed out their tab and got drunk guy home. The bar calls the employer the next morning, complaining about the new guy's dork antics, banning him and anyone wearing company gear. New guy was fired before lunch on day two. A cautionary story edit. The bar was in a never gentrified, always wealthy part of SF California. Patrons were very wealthy people entitled. Myself, having worked in fine dining in college, I can only imagine the absolute hell those patrons raised about seeing some dork while slurping down their third martini. Many of you relate to this story and have shared about not even wearing something as small as a lanyard W slash company info on it. This is all great logic. Please keep it up and share that advice. It is especially pertinent when your employer, like the subject of my story, is known globally for children's entertainment. Exposing yourself to anyone, let alone a bunch of connected rich assholes, is definitely not the move when Pixar signs your check. Story 11. Former friend of mine was arrested for soliciting an 11 year for us Al Favors online and traveling across state to meet her. I never expected him to do that. His girlfriend at the time asked if I wanted to be a character witness, and I noped out before she finished her sentence. Judge made an example out of him and sentenced him to life. Apparently, it wasn't his first essay offense. 
I can't believe she even stuck around to even consider looking for people to testify on his behalf at it. He got the girl to do stuff to him in his car. He was only caught after her friend saw pictures of her boyfriend and realized he was way too old to be an 11 yo's boyfriend and told the girl's mother. He was 31 when he was sentenced. Story 12. My father-in-law is 65, was married to his wife for 37 years and has three daughters. The picture-perfect family from the outside looking in. He was well-respected in his career field and was also an interim pastor deacon at our local church. After he retired, his health started to deteriorate drastically and he started drinking. This past November, we learned that he had fell for a love scam on Facebook and had spent his entire life savings, took out a second mortgage on his home, and opened up numerous credit cards to send this fake person money. All in all, he sent them roughly $300K. He was truly convinced she was going to move here from overseas and they were going to ride off into the sunset, leave everything behind, and live happily ever after. Now he is divorced, lives in a crummy apartment about 45 minutes from his family, and is miserable. He can barely walk and has essentially zero control over his bowel movements. To make matters worse, he has very narcissistic tendencies and thinks that none of it is his fault and instead blames his ex-wife, claiming that she didn't love him and show him any affection. As you can imagine, this has affected my wife, her sisters, and mother immensely and caused all sorts of problems and stress over the last eight months. But long story short, he lost everything. His assets, his family, his health, and happiness. I would be shocked if he's even alive a year from now. Story 13. Knew a guy in the military that had 18 years in and was doing online classes to get his MBA. He was in his final semester of getting his MBA and two years away from a military retirement. Then he traveled 1,500 miles across the country to try hook up with a 15-year-old girl. Spent two and a half years in prison, was kicked out of the military and his college he was attending. I'm not entirely sure if he could pick up where he left off to get his MBA at the same college or a different one. But that's probably useless for him anyways now, since he's a convicted felon. I don't think having an MBA is going to make employers overlook your felony for trying to have SX with a minor. Story 14. An old customer got fired from Uber and DD for being slow arriving with cold food way too often. Comes into my bar the next day with limited edition XO week sweater plus jeans, new Apple Watch, and new iPhone all paid cash. Says he took out a payday loan for $10K and doesn't intend to pay it back. He'll just cancel the bank account. His exact words, who needs credit anyways? He stopped showing up to the bar after about three months. Never saw him again. Edit. For those asking, no, I don't think this is some mafia stuff. A very stupid decision by a reckless individual with no way to pay any of it back and incurring crazy debt interest at 22 years old. Story 15. In Germany, there was a contestant on the show, Wet and Das, translated as Bet That, a few years ago. In the show, Statements about crazy talents and activities were presented by the participants. The contestants bet on things they could do and get a prize if they could actually perform the self-proclaimed tasks talents. One participant bet that he would be able to jump over moving cars. It went wrong and he was left a paraplegic. He has since largely recovered, psychological, not physical, and is handling it great as far as the public is concerned. But the situation will probably always stick in my mind. Oh, and clearly heroin. The shortcut to ruining your own life as quickly as possible. Story 16. Colleague starts out great at new job, gets through probation, then gets out of control drunk at a company party. She makes out with the boss's date and hooks up with another colleague while her husband is there. Fast forward, she's dating this colleague now and their relationship is causing disciplinary measures at work. They decide to double down and sign a new lease together anyways. She then lies about getting poached by a customer to leverage a raise, and when it doesn't work, she actually has to quit. Her boyfriend then follows suit by not showing up and ghosting the company. Now he's a stay-at-home stepdad. Oh, did I mention she has three kids? After being with this girl for six months and they both don't have a job. Kind of a two-for-one. Story 17. About 16 years ago, the company I worked for wanted to expand into America. To do so, they sent me and several of my co-workers abroad. We lived in the U.S. for several years to set it up. When we were there, one of my co-workers became fascinated with, I guess what you'd U.S. gangster culture. He started dressing like a stereotypical gangster got tattoos, said the N-word with a hard R constantly, and even got a gun from who knows there. So it was a nice night, about three weeks before we were due to go back. We had set up chairs in a park to drink beers and were pretty buzzed. Suddenly, some dude starts shouting at us from a distance, and my friend, with all his logical thinking, concluded that it must be a threat. So he pulled out his gun and opened fire. That guy was a cop. The policeman understandably returned fire. The rest of us dived to the ground, and my friend is hit twice, one in his shoulder, and one in his leg. 
It turns out that there had been some kidnapping nearby by some people that matched our general appearance, which was why the cop started out hostile. I didn't blame him, and it was both his and his partner's testimonies that protected us from any legal trouble. The next few weeks were a blur, but I remember him still being hospitalized when I flew back home. I don't actually know what happened to him after that. My boss told me he's still alive, but he got fired, obviously, but I never saw him again. Story 18. Secondary school friend of mine, fellow nurse, colleague, father, decided it would be a good idea to steal a ton of medication, got caught, fired, and struck off, went from prescription medications to hard medicates, wife left him and took the kid, oh, dead, and passed away last October. This all happened within the space of about four months. The speed in which he went from top of our profession to willing to throw it all away, to unemployed, to literally underscore dead underscore absolutely blindsided me. I'll never know now, obviously, but I have a strong suspicion he had a secret addiction that he managed to keep very underscore very underscore under wraps. Only 31. Story 19. My rich uncle destroyed his life by getting drunk and defeating a woman with his car. For backstory, my uncle was a very successful corporate lawyer. He had it all. Beautiful family, multi-million dollar mansion, fancy cars and constant vacations to any exotic place in the world he felt like going to. That all went away when he got blackout drunk at a holiday party with the law firm and ended up hitting a young woman with his car, dragging her body for a mile or so, and then running hiding from the cops. The girl was defeated, and in his drunken stupor, he must have decided it was a good idea to speed at 100 plus MPA through the city with her body mangled on the hood. They found him later on hiding in a parking garage cowering in the corner. He had abandoned his car as it was completely totaled after he hit a tree trying to flee. He bailed on foot. The guy was always very arrogant, and even now as he serves his time in prison, he got off super easy considering he defeated somebody, having connections and wealth will do that. He doesn't show much remorse for the family of the girl he defeated. He is mostly bitter that nobody wants to go visit him. He whines about it apparently. I will never look at him the same again. The girl he defeated was a 23-year-old immigrant from Mexico with dreams of being a nurse and she was taking classes for that until his arrogance ended her life. There is so much more I could share about the circumstances surrounding this that would make people's blood boil. He lost his career, his family lost everything they had basically, and worst of all, he ruined another person's family, and yet he hasn't learned his lesson. Story 20. My husband had a nice job as a high-level retail manager before his store closed. He became a lead for less dollar in an inventory company. He was generally considered to be a nice but quiet. You'd see more of his personality when he was working on computers, self-taught, or video games or pool. General consensus was that he was a good guy always ready to game with the kids. Less than a month after our sixth anniversary, I found a video on our tablet from a hidden camera in our bathroom that showed my 14-year-old niece unclothed. It looked like he kept the image on the cloud and would add it to whatever device he was using and then delete it. He just missed that last step. I called the police immediately and he never came home again. They found more imagines on his computer and a 20-minute video, full front view of his face, as he tries to hide the camera. He pled guilty and received 40 years with 34 suspended. He will have to register as a love offender and has some pretty stiff rules to follow. No alcohol, no items that can connect to the internet unless he pays for a company to put monitoring software on every internet accessible device. The day I found it, I sent him to work with a kiss. I found the images around 1130 AM and had surrendered the tablet and gotten the case started with the police by 1145. I have told every relationship you've been in, husband included, that the one thing that will make me turn you in and walk away and never look back. He truly thought I would never leave him and was all surprised Pikachu face when I kept my promise. His actions caused him to lose everything he took for granted that he would always. Our daughter was five then, and for her, he just disappeared one day. Now, I am watching her grow and mature into a beautiful person, and he doesn't get the privilege of even knowing this beautiful child. I'm sure that separation has hurt him a lot, but you don't get trusted with any child, even your own, after you do something like that. Good riddance, 34 years suspended sentence. Story 21. Someone I went to school with after we graduated, him and a friend were drinking one summer night and messing around on a skid steer. I live in a small town. Apparently, one of the boys was in the bucket part and one was driving. They hit a bump and the boy in the bucket fell out and got ran over. It defeated him. To make the story worse, the boy who passed away. His older brother had passed away just a couple years previous, and that older brother was best friends with the one who accidentally defeated his younger brother. So this guy dealt with the death of one of his best friends and then accidentally defeated another friend who happened to be his deceased best friend's brother. It really messed him up, 
Parents apparently walked into his room with a gun in his mouth. I have no idea how the guy is doing these days because I don't think he has any social medias. In high school, he was pretty popular. Played football, but was generally nice. Wonder if he's holding up okay these days. And before anyone comments negativity, yes, it was wrong they were drinking and messing with such equipment. But it's still tragic and I'm sure he's been punished enough by his own thoughts for it. Story 22. A guy I worked with at Papa John's when I was in college bought a gun from a co-worker. Our other co-worker got robbed delivering a pizza. He told me he wants to see if it works. He went and shot it into an empty developing neighborhood into some trees. The bullets hit a house behind the trees with a family and kids. Nobody was hurt, but they were scared to death. Police immediately came and arrested him before he could even pull off. They were camping out in that neighborhood already since people were coming at night to puff herb, have love and shoot guns some. He shot three shots, got 25 years in prison for attempted murder and reckless endangerment. First time ever shooting a gun. We were only 19. This was in 2006. I think about him a lot. We weren't close like that. But he's still in prison over a five-second mistake 17 years later. Really nerdy kid too. First time ever in trouble. I follow his sister on Facebook. He's unrecognizable now. Imagine McCloven from Superbad who looks like Jason Momoa now with tats on his face. Sad. Also, my roommate a few weeks later was struggling financially and decided to buy two pounds of herb to sell with his student loan refund check. Got pulled over and arrested the same day. Got five years. Can't make this stuff up. Story 23. Did a rotation in a trauma burns ICU. Two big ones that stuck with me. 1. 16, 17th year old kid got drunk and decided to climb a water tower with his friends. Fell and broke his neck. Paraplegic, couldn't talk or move. His friends would come and see him. But when they left, you could just see the desperation in his eyes. Heartbreaking to see. 2. 15 year old kid was breaking into cars. Well, the last one he broke into, the owner ran out and shot him. Hit him in the head. Had cranial surgery, half his cranium was missing. Kid survived but needed complete care. Felt terrible for his mom. I never saw her leave his side. Lots of other patients that completely changed their own slash family slash strangers' lives with one poor decision. Story 24. A few high school classmates. Dan, not his name, just started hanging out with bad peers. One weekend, the guys decided to hang out at Dan's house. They ordered pizza and told Dan to get change for $100. They left Dan's house to get drinks. Pizza arrives, and while exchanging the order with Dan, the other guys run out from the bushes. They start beating up the delivery driver. Dan didn't know they were going to do that and tried to stop them. Yet none of them knew the driver was legally carrying. Dan got shot and passed away, I'll tell you, to the hospital. The other guys got arrested and spent three-plus years in jail. They were supposed to graduate in two months. Story 25. It took four hours. He woke up, murdered his grandparents in their sleep, stole all of the firearms in the house and his grandfather's truck, and fled. I grew up with this dude. He was a genuinely good person. We were friends all of elementary school and most of middle school. He was an amazing friend and always knew how to help someone. But he had a lot of mental health issues, and his religious family believed it was just possession by demons and whatnot. Recently, his actual hearing was done, and you could tell how far off the deep end he had gotten. Smiling the whole time they described what he did, laughed when they sentenced him, and had to be dragged out laughing like a lunatic saying, It's over, Grandpa! It's over. It was during the court trials that we found out his grandparents were apparently Sussex ally abusing him, something the rest of the family seemingly knew quite well, but ignored. And they'd refused to let him leave the house despite him being in his 20s and a legal adult. They isolated him from the world, told him he was possessed by demons, and let his grandparents molest him repeatedly without intervention. I'm honestly not even surprised he did it. I'm just sad it went down the way it did. Story 26. I work for the Canada Revenue Agency. When you're hired, they tell you never to plug your phone or other storage device into your work computer, or you will be immediately flagged and canned. This one girl was like one month into the job, and I watched her pull out her phone and plug the charger into her computer. Ten minutes later, our head of security was looming over her, watching her clean out her desk. She will likely never be allowed to work for the government ever again. At least once a year, I see an email reminding existing staff of our rules because somebody went and plugged their phone in. Story 27. I worked at a bank years ago, helped a customer who was just married open an account with the gifted money from their wedding. A few weeks later, I helped them open a CD for six months with a six-digit check. Seven months later, I saw this person's spouse walk furiously towards my counter asking for a balance. As they did that, the person who originally opened the account tried to slyly hand me a note that read a balance they wanted me to read. I froze. Over that last month, this person would come in every Friday with their friends, and they'd be scheming ways to beat a casino. Obviously, they lost. The account was actually negative. I couldn't bear the burden of telling this poor spouse that their entire account was negative 
and all the money from the wedding and from the accountee's buyout check, a check an employer gives you to voluntarily leave the job, was all spent at a casino over a one-month period. I walked away and went straight to the manager, explained the situation. My manager had too big of a grin, Imo, but they went and spilled the beans. It was followed by a bunch of screaming, crying, and pounding on counters and a feet on the floor. My coworkers seemed to get a good laugh from it, but to this day, I get anxiety thinking about it. Story 28. My older brother was in high school, already secured a full baseball scholarship and one of the best players I've ever seen. His friends, who were in the neighborhood gang, told him that they would let him join if he stole a 12-pack from a gas station. He did it, of course, and the police found him walking down the road with it. He got a slap of the wrist after a night in juvie, but that scholarship went out the window. Not long after he dropped out, shaved his head, got caught up in the violence of the gang, tattooed his face, got half his teeth replaced, and had a few kids with different girls. He rode that life for almost 10 years until his new girlfriend set him straight and has spent the past few years trying to be a good dad, got off medicates, got a steady job. We don't talk anymore, but I'm still rooting for him. Story 29. A boyfriend of mine graduated from Columbia University with a master's in biochemistry, got into every medical school he applied to, was beautiful inside and out, captivated any room he walked into, close with his family, sweet as can be, but was diagnosed late as an adult with Asperger's, got mixed up in medicates toward the end of our relationship, so I left him, but remained his friend in hopes I could help him through. A girl doping up with him one day overdosed and passed away and was arrested for her death because he panicked rather than calling 911. I then helped him through rehab during his ongoing legal proceedings. Two years after we dated, and of no benefit to me other than to see him live as well as a promise I'd made to his mother to do everything I could on my end to help. And within a year, he'd relapsed and passed away. Very sad to meet someone at their highest potential, but also watch them fall to their death in a span of about 3.5 years. Story 30. I work at an adult exorcist and equipment store. New kid comes in for first day on the job, freshly 21. Ready to enjoy the sweet, sweet ease of laid-back retail selling adult videos and funny silicone molds to the perverse and lonely. Saw one of our bigger molds and thought, I can stuff that up my dollar dollar real fast, and I can walk out of here no problem with a dollar one hundred wobbly statue of a true footlong. Honestly, just like the sandwich and every other man I know, it was a few inches shorter than advertised. Needless to say, it's very, very obvious when a big rooster goes missing and a dude is walking like he hasn't taken a bathroom break in over an hour. It is also a lot more obvious when his khakis are bleeding from the rear, and we are pretty darn sure he wasn't on his period. Ended up in the hospital with a seriously torn rectum and criminal charges for stealing. Moral of the story. Don't do the crime if your butt can't take it, and for the love of every fertility deity out there, use lube. Story 31. So I know a guy from elementary all through high school, and we drifted post-high school. He was an insanely smart kid always very polite and kind. His mom passed away a couple of years back, and he started to sink into a bit of a pit, impossible to reach out, as he deleted all his social media. He got into the wrong crowd, and earlier this week, he made the news for murdering his younger cousin over an alleged dispute over a basketball game. Despite his life's hardships, he was doing great. He had a degree from one of the best schools in the country, best in the province by far, and in one night, he threw it all away. So sad to see man. Story 32. Imagine going to college and getting your degree and all the work it takes. You contract in scholarship with the army, who pays for all of your college and gives you stipends and other money each semester. Then you finally commission as an officer and go active duty days later. As soon as you get to your new assignment, you decide to go drink in the local city, drive drunk, and then get arrested and charged with a DUI. Guess what happens then? You get kicked out the army. Saw someone throw their entire life away within three days of graduating college lost everything, and had to pay back the whole scholarship because he didn't fulfill his four-year commitment. Story 33. Two guys got into an argument at an old job I had. One of them was clearly the provocateur and a bit of A. But the other snapped and they started pushing and shoving and that second guy punched him. He got fired as a result. He was otherwise a pretty mild guy. I wouldn't say it wrecked his life, but he had a good job and it's an industry where it definitely affected his reputation. Felt kind of bad for him. The provocateur guy got written up. He didn't lose his job but he did get bad performance reviews, etc., and eventually left. But his reputation didn't suffer as much as the first guy. Moral of the story? If you want to punch a colleague, do it after work and not in the office. Story 34. It took me about two days to ruin my life and change things forever. When I was 21, my fiancée, who I dated for over a year, abruptly left me and ghosted me. I found out she'd cheated on me with at least two different men and had been pregnant. It took me a week to find out, 
As soon as I did, I absolutely broke down. I spent about $3K in saving in two days. I quit my job. I made all of my friends hate me. Then I got absolutely stuffed face drunk and went to her apartment and beat the ever-living stuff out of the guy she left me for. I spent 14 months in jail and another seven in prison over two days worth of bad decision. I'm 30, it's been almost nine years, and I'm still picking up the pieces of my life. Story 35. Knew a guy who was all set with a football scholarship for college. So before he left him and his buddies threw a huge going away party in a field by his house, including a bonfire, it starts to get out of hand and alerts the cops who start to show up to arrest people. He, his GF, and a buddy of his try to escape in his truck and end up hitting a stump and crashing into his barbed wire fence. None of them were wearing seatbelts. His friend survived, albeit with a massive concussion that years later affects his memories. His girlfriend was thrown from the vehicle and passed away on impact. He wound up tangled in the barbed wire and an infection developed in one of his legs that lead to it having to be amputated. He went from a bright-eyed 17-year-old heading to college to a guy struggling to adjust to life without a leg while spending a year and a half in prison for drunk driving and accidental homicide or something like that. For almost two decades after that, he was really into drinking and medicates and just generally destroying himself until finally his GF's mom visited him and convinced him to get on the road to recovery by pointing out his GF would have never wanted him to do this to himself. He's been sober for years, has a steady job, a wife, and two kids. But you can look into his eyes and still catch that haunted look. Story 36. Guy who puffed a blunt at a party that was possibly laced with PCP or something. He lost his mind right after. Started accusing me of stealing his stuff and replacing it with identical copies. Thinking I was plotting against him with other people. It was scary as alarms since I lived with him. Edit. So I had different living arrangements a few months after. I'd run into him on campus sometimes and he'd seem fine, but different than he used to be. More timid. But we'd exchange numbers again and say, let's do something. And I didn't see him again. According to social media, it seems like he's doing well. At least no indication to the contrary. I believe he graduated, but not 100% on that. Story 37. My wife worked at a mental hospital for long-term patients. Basically, most of the people there were going to be there forever and wouldn't really get better. One patient she had was a lawyer. Super smart guy who had just finished up his law degree at some highly respected school. Was scheduled to take his bar exam and spent the month leading up to it in super study mode. Studying 16 hours a day, etc., etc. Anyway, the day of the exam, he wakes up and doesn't feel super great. Manned up and went to the exam anyway. Crushed it. Passed with flying colors, etc., etc. Went back home and his roommate offered to take him to the doctor because he didn't look good. Guy said he was just exhausted from all the weeks of studying and just needed a good long sleep. Self-medicated with sleeping pills and went to bed. Ending up spiking a huge fever that basically cooked his brain while he was in bed. Has permanent brain damage that resulted in severe schizophrenia. And he constantly hears multiple voices that speak to him and tell him what to do. Not violent in any way, but he can't focus at all because of all the voices constantly talking to him. The staff basically have to herd him around where he needs to go all the time because he literally can't tell the difference between real people talking to him and the voices in his head. 20-something-year-old guy with bright future whose life was ruined just because he didn't go to the doctor when he had a fever. Story 38. I was an alcoholic for years. It was widely known, but I at the time had a job and was a successful functioning alcoholic. More and more small cracks were becoming bigger cracks in my personal foundation until the only thing I didn't really lose was my car. My father, who I lived with at the time, gave me the ultimatum of basically either going to rehab or never talking to him again. And given that he was the only person left I could even talk to, I had to do the right thing. I spent 97 days in a facility and got out in November of 2021. It took me a couple months of adjusting to my new lifestyle outside of rehab. But now, I have a job working third shift. I have the majority of people I love, loved back in my life, although I know I won't get all of them back, and that is 100% my fault. Every day is a different day I can try my hardest to avoid being the person I became. And I am going to do that every goddamn day until my body gives out because I have too much to live for without alcohol. I lost years or my life, people, money, property, and even freedom and self-respect. But I am slowly gaining all of it back. Story 39. A few years ago, I met a girl who, to put it mildly before figuring her out, was a little wild. Nice body, great looks. However, while we dated, lasting only three weeks, I started to hear so many things about her. That she was a drunk, had a gangbanger ex-boyfriend who was still in her life, had two kids taken away by child services, was too much of a Medicaid head, would do anything for money. I thought it was all BS, but turns out it was true. Four years after we dated, I started working for an insurance company as a community specialist. 
This is rather crucial on this, since my job duties had me visiting at risk people who had not reported in for their insurance benefits. One day, my immediate manager called me into his office and asked me to look for someone in my neighborhood, since there was a huge concern over her. I saw the file, saw the name, and it was her. I got a hold of her after I had found her and told her I needed to meet up with her to basically get her help. The last time I had seen her, her skin was a little too yellow, so I knew she might have had cirrhosis brought on from neglect, high alcohol consumption, and Medicaid use. She said yes, but kept dodging me. Eventually, a month passed, and then another, and by this time, my entire department was laid off. I never got to help her. A week later, she was found dead from cirrhosis. She was only 27. Story 40. Guy I knew in school became a police officer. He started dating another officer, and they eventually split up. Him and her went out for a few drinks after they split up, and him and his brother came up with a plan to hide in her bag, and the brother would call the police on her. The police turned up and searched her bag and arrested her for possession. She rightfully said she had never seen the medicates before and weren't hers. They eventually searched for fingerprints on the bag of, and only found the guy I knew from school's fingerprints on the bag. He lost his career and got sent to prison for seven years. His brother also got a few years in prison for his part in it as well. Story 41. So, my dad's friend went on a motorcycle ride without a helmet and met with an accident in a relatively lonely road. He was injured pretty badly. His son was following him in a car, like five men's behind. So he saw this and thought he'd rush his dad to a hospital rather than call for help. While rushing, the car met with the accident, and the son passed away instantly. The dad was left paralyzed for life. Couple of poor judgment calls in a span of 15. 20 men's can just change your entire life. Can't think of a faster way that someone ruined their life. No one saw what actually happened, but I'm pretty sure there was carelessness involved. Pretty sad, though. I feel for the wife mom. Story 42. Friend in high school. Was a straight-laced type. Didn't drink or do medicates. Then one night, his friends convince him to do whippets. Little canisters of nitrous, I guess it is. There were three kids there. They went into a field and took turns doing it, going unconscious repeatedly, then getting up to do another hit, almost like in a frenzy. The driver of the car then has some kind of panic attack, gets in the car and starts driving for unknown reasons. His friend had slid off the hood of the car and was laying in front of the wheels. The driver crushed his head, went to prison for it. I don't know how many years, all I know is he committed suicide before his sentence was up. He was not the type who would have done well in prison. Little skinny sheltered kid. Story 43. Story from a friend. Buddy. His boss, Guy, at a cushy security firm, lost his wife and daughters, job, house, and everything after he went on a long, drunken rant about his cheating. Talking a boy how he thinks his daughters would never amount to anything and blaming his wife for never giving him the sons a man like him deserves. And his desire to burn his work down just to try and get away with it. And one of the other patrons recorded most of it before sending it to Guy's boss. Guy went from making almost 150 k a year sitting on his butt and watching cameras, living in a five-bedroom house with a wife who made almost just as much as him, to barely making 60 k and having to work as a retail rent-a-cop while living in a crappy one-bedroom apartment in New York. Buddy got Guy's job, married his GF a year later, and hasn't had more than a single glass of bourbon since watching Guy burn his life down. Story 44. One of my friends growing up came from a rough beginning. His dad was in prison, his mom was selling herself, and his aunts and uncles were pretty abusive. He worked very hard to distance himself from that lifestyle, and for his teen years and most of his adult life, he kept his nose in the books. Then he got a good job doing construction. He got pretty high up in the chain of command, too. Some of his family visited him one day unannounced, and he started drinking. Just drank all the time. Someone said he showed up to the job site drunk too many times and got fired. He told everyone he quit, though. He's in prison for murder now. Story 45. Medicates murdered my teenage childhood sober now for quite a while. Ten solid years now without any relapses. But I went from being 13 and normal for the most part to 14 and having love with 40-year-old men to get high. It went from acid to herb to X, then crystal, then crack. It was quick. And from one extreme to another. Then luckily, even after all the lies, stealing my mom still took my butt in at 18 and got my sober. After everything. I was awful. Stole from my mom and brother. Just terrible. The lies. The money I stole they were saving for a vehicle FFS. It was only four years. But it's the biggest regret of my life. I did horrible things to a lot of people. People who I loved and didn't deserve any of it. My mom especially. Everyone, but especially her. I love her more than anything and am so grateful for her. She saved my life. Story 46. Almost a decade ago, a young man in the city I grew up in started behaving erratically over the course of a few weeks. Nobody in his life intervened or recognized that something was deeply wrong. 
Eventually, at an end-of-the-year party thrown by fellow students of one of our local universities, he fully snapped, had a complete psychotic break due to his, at the time, undiagnosed and untreated schizophrenia, and stabbed five people to death. I never met him personally, but I knew some of the friend's family of one of the victims. He was found fit to stand trial, but was declared not criminally responsible because of the severity of the aforementioned mental illness. He's still in psychiatric treatment and was recently denied release as despite his progress, he's still considered too large a risk. Honestly, the whole thing breaks my heart. Five people dead because some dude's brain is fundamentally malfunctioning. And while I fully agree that he's too dangerous to be released, I feel for him too. Almost 10 years gone, and he did nothing wrong besides being born with a tragically severe mental illness. It's just so dang sad all around.